On a recent journey to my house in the heart of the Amazon rainforest, I had a first-hand encounter with the drought that is affecting the area and an estimated 500,000 people. That morning, I set out with a very different idea and never imagined what I was about to experience. Today I was trying to catch a boat to go out and film some of the jungle, but unfortunately they don't have any boats on weekdays. So it's only Saturday and Sunday and I can't do that, it's Friday today. But I found a fellow TV crew that's going out to cover a story about how dry the rivers are here and how low they are right now. And I decided to follow them and they agreed that I could just follow them and see what comes up. But before we sail out, I have time to take a look at the small harbor where I am. It is situated on an affluent to the river Rio Negro. The main flow of Rio Negro is one of the two most important affluents to the Amazon River. This particular affluent to Rio Negro is almost completely dried out and only a small stream of water remains. It is also quite clear where the banks of the river used to be just a few months ago and that the floating houses are now resting directly on the riverbank. The drought also revealed all the plastic bottles and visible pollution in the mud that used to be the riverbed. I have never seen anything like this, and to me the place reminds me of a film, only that this is real life and it's happening right now. This small marina is buzzing with canoes and boats that transport people and goods to the communities further down the river. These communities have become more or less isolated because of the drought. This because the river serves as the main line of communication to get to and from these communities. The river is also where everything they need to sustain their lives, from drinking water, food and gas is being transported. So when the river dries out, it becomes a serious problem for the communities along the river. As I mentioned before, it is estimated that up to 500,000 people are affected by the present drought. As we set out from the harbor, we follow the Rio Negro downstream. The river boat is carrying people, families, as well as goods. While on the boat, we take some time to imagine what we are going to find when we get to the community. And we film some scenery we see from the boat. One thing that strikes me is that there are a lot of sandy beaches along the river. They are, of course, a lot wider now because of the drought. And everywhere there are other boats transporting people and necessities to the communities that have become isolated. When we spot a boat similar to ours that is wedged into the riverbed, it becomes clear to us how low the river actually is and that these people are struggling with the drought on a daily basis. As we approach a small temporary pontoon harbor with a kiosk on it, I realize that we are going to disembark here in order to take a smaller boat for the rest of the journey. The community we are visiting used to have a harbor where this kind of boat could moor, but the part of the river where it is, is completely dried out now. So we must continue our journey in a smaller canoe that can handle the shallow waters and land directly on the beach. The TV crew I'm traveling with makes good use of time in the canoe and tries to secure an interview with some of the people that live in the community. We still do not know exactly what we will find on land, so they are not 100% sure how they will focus their story, but I'm sure they will manage once we get ashore. As we make landfall, we start realizing just how much water the river have actually lost. Because of the heat, the river this year have descended so much that the local people are having difficulties coming here. They have to change boats about five minutes from here and go in smaller boats. And they really depend on their boats because everything they bring in, everything they eat, drink and need for their households, they bring in by boats. So it's a huge problem. It quickly becomes very clear to us what a huge job it is for people here to not only transport everything they need in these small canoes, but also carry it from the waterline over the muddy riverbank to a car that then drive it to the nearby community. It is of course not only the effort that goes into it that makes it a difficult situation, but also the cost of this extra handling that makes the situation very difficult for people living here. That extra cost is unsustainable for most people we talk with. After my return, I have read official statements saying that the Rio Negro is losing 20 centimeters of water a day. And some of the people we met told us it's more likely to be 30 to 40 centimeters a day. No matter what is the actual amount of centimeters, the effect of the drought is very visible to everyone here. When I was there, I sent up my drone to get an overview of the area. And when I got home, I compared these images to the satellite photos from Google Maps. I realized just how crazy this is. You can see that the water used to go right up to the trees and even cover some of the mangroves that we find in the tree line. The locals tell us it is the worst drought that they have ever experienced. 
It's believed to be a combination between the weather phenomenon El Nino and extreme temperatures in the Atlantic Ocean that is affecting the weather systems over the Amazon rainforest. The drought is of course not just affecting people, but also crops and all the wildlife is suffering in and around the largest river in the world. After all, I got my story for this channel. And although very different from what I set out to film, I think it's an important story to tell to show how communities are being affected by climate change during what is said by the locals to be the worst drought ever. The drought is probably caused by other people far from their world. Recent studies reveal that with the present temperature rise, a drought like this, or worse, is much more likely to occur with higher frequency. Standing here, it is unfortunately difficult to comprehend that we are in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. 